this morning in the Senate State Affairs Committee, here is Melissa Wintrow questioning Senator Cindy Carlson about House Bill 710, which Carlson is uh, sponsoring on the Senate side, which would put which would put into place a mechanism for parents to protest the placement of pornographic material. And we're going to get into that. Warning, warning, warning. We're going to get into that. For restricting the placement of the pornographic material in libraries, in the kids section, for kids and minors to fall, to, uh, to, to, to discover. So here is Melissa Wintrow this morning questioning Senator Cindy Carlson. Wintrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Senator Carlson. I think the thing I've been thinking about since the testimony was, like, how do you actually determine what's adult? Because I think we agree there's no pornography in the library. So we're trying to identify material based on content that someone perceives as adult where somebody might not perceive as adult. Or, so I'm, I'm just still kind of confused how we come up with that other than constitutional kind of provisions. Senator Carlson. <clears throat> Chairman Guthrie and Senator Wintrow. I think that most children, we, that the confusing for most people is probably in their teen year, like so some teens might be 16 going on 30, some te teens might be 16 going on 10, and, and that is that is the problem. But we, we have clarified that adults are 18 and over. So if parents want their children to have access to this material, then they really, then they just allow their children to do it by allowing them to have access to the books that are in the adult section, per se. So what was clearly shocking here was the presumption that uh, Senator Wintrow says, oh, you know, there's no porn in the library. We can all agree to that. <laughs> we can all agree to that. As if porn is only limited to Penthouse Magazine. When this issue first erupted many moons ago, parents, concerned citizens, were showing up to their libraries uh, to their library uh, trustee meetings. And um, and some of them are extremely, extremely um, articulate. <laughs> and others are not only articulate, but, uh, but offer up fantastic analogies. And if you know me, I love a good analogy. This one is a little hard to swallow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry, guys. Um, okay. Let's bring it back. Warning. Yes. Let's just play play the warning here. If you don't, if we don't laugh, we cry. And I, I'm not sobbing on camera. I'm not going to sob on camera because this is this is serious stuff. Um, a a concerned citizen showed up at the uh, community library network, which is a network of libraries in North Idaho, and um, and she she had a, a few minutes to to discuss um, what she found in the library. Let's roll that. Thank you. I warn this book is pornographic for those who do not want to be exposed. You say that you have not moved any books since the new materials policy, i.e. porn, and that you must look at material as a whole, not individual passages, when deciding if a book is pornographic and should be in the minor section. Pacific Justice Institute sent you a letter encouraging you, you can move these books from the minor section. Porn is porn. Respectfully, here is an example to help you understand and appeal to your conscience and common sense. It's like the library taking a glass of water with a piece of poop in it, as demonstrated by my candy bar, then saying to the kids and their parents, there's only a piece of poop in it, so therefore it's still good to drink. Would anyone here drink water with poop in it? Why then would you think it's okay to give kids books with porn, however big or small? Now, this book, A Court of Silver Flames, is more like 64 pieces of poop loaded into the water for our kids to consume. 64 pages of explicit, mostly pornographic content. 
It's labeled adolescent in the system, and it is uh, available for kids as young as 12. Has a mix of adult and juvenile placements, showing the adult content, and is checked out at most libraries. Disturbing excerpts from Pornfield, page 516 to 517. Uh, Nesta ground her aching nipples into the wood surface, savoring the brutal crush. The liquid slide of his cock into her sounded obscenely. His balls brushed against her. Exquisite, punishing thrust slammed so deep, he hit her innermost wall, and her eyes rolled back into her head. He became savage, unrelenting. Nesta knew she would bruise, loved that she would bruise. I like it when you ride me hard every time my body is sore. I think of you, of your cock. I love being so covered in your seed that it leaks out of me for ages afterward. I love feeling it slide down my thighs and knowing you left your mark in me. He blew out, pounding wildly now. Cassian came with a roar, pulse of his cock spurting deep into her. His seed was again running down her thighs until he slid his finger through a stream of it and brought it up to the spot at the apex of her sex, smearing his wetness there. The American College of Pediatricians stated June 2016, sexual predators have purposely exposed children to pornography for the purpose of grooming children for sexual exploitation. Let's not make them susceptible to those who would use this exposure to prey upon their innocence. The water is contaminated. Over a year we have asked, we have support the library, just stop giving this to kids. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, so what was the title of that book? Um, I think our producers have been looking up to see if that particular book, A Court of Silver Flames, is still in the public libraries. And there it is. It is still in the library. Now, it could still be in there, but where is it Where is it categorized? What's the category? Is this still in the kids section? I, I'm, I'm, is that young adult? Young adult fiction. So it's still in the, in the young adult section, at least according to the website. It'd be interesting to go into these libraries and see where these books are. Okay, so now you're saying to yourself, um, okay, you know that that uh, that sort of that sort of um, book, which is a novel, I would I would imagine, uh, that has many graphic scenes in it, um, uh, is probably not appropriate for an underage reader. Um, but uh, but it, does that classify as pornography? Because when we think of pornography, we we generally think of images, right? We think of scenes, we think of of uh, things that are well. Now they you need age verification on a website to go visit this stuff, um, and so uh, so so maybe so maybe you're still thinking, well, this isn't generally pornography per se, as as we as we've come to know it. But um, Anna Miller, who uh, is no longer with the Idaho Freedom Foundation, but she she was she was working on a huge project last year, I believe, maybe two years ago now, and she was over at the Idaho Freedom Foundation, and she published an expose, she published an, an investigative journalism article. Idaho school libraries promote radical sexual agendas and pornographic material. And let's go full screen on this. We don't have to scroll scroll easy now. Yeah, let's go let's go right there. She says that um, Idaho school libraries have become facilitators for a national far left agenda that warps both sex and gender through exposure to pornographic material as well as noxious propaganda. Let's hold it right there. The the public commenter in that clip that we just showed you read to you the warning from um uh, for, oh, I forget what it, what it's from, but about what this this type of stuff, how this type of stuff is used by sexual predators to groom children, to get them to to get them um, desensitized to sexual to sexualness to, to to graphic sexual con by using graphic sexual content, it desensitizes them in order for them to then move the bar and then for them to eventually prey on them or or God knows what else. It's 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 horrific. And this is a fact. This is a fact that the, that this the, this is what this stuff is used for. If you start to scroll down, it's 
we, we, this article, and we'll, we'll, we'll post the link, but this article seems to, to suggest that, it, oh, this is now, um, here, here's a few books. Now, if you go onto this website, all of these images are, are, um, if you click, like click on the left one there, if you just click on it, it'll show you that it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, marked as sensitive. So they hide, they hide this, this stuff. So let's, let's open them back up again. And you can see here the bottom of the, the the first image here from a book called Trans Plus shows a page of transitioning of these naked bodies. There's a book called This Is Gay. Part one is called Boy on Boy Sex. Here is a diagram of a boy. If you are also a boy, you are probably aware of which parts feel nice when you touch them. But here's a rough guide. Okay. As we continue scrolling down, there's a graphic novel of The Handmaid's Tale, which is a show that's on... Uh, that is on um, uh, Hulu now, uh, showing uh, showing depiction. There's another book called Be Gay, Do Comics. If you continue scrolling, there's a book called Let's Talk About Sex. Let's talk about it. I think we a, agree there's no pornography in the library. Oh, oh, is that right, Melissa Wintro? There's no pornography in the library? I'm looking at a book called Let's Talk Sex, which literally has a page in the top right corner of your screen. That looks pretty graphic to me. And it says, but here's a heads up. Pornography is a performance. It's not a blueprint on how to have sex in real life. Just like an action movie isn't a guide on how to drive a car. Watching porn uncritically can leave you with unrealistic expectations about what to do in the bedroom. So do yourself a favor and consume it with a hefty pinch of salt. At the same time, remember that the people you see on camera are real human beings who deserve your respect. And there they are, with a giant spotlight on them, as they engage in pornographic, um, whatever you want, to, whatever that is. Um, if you think this stuff was only limited to sex and is and is therefore um, limiting, and it's I, I'm at a loss for words here. I apologize. But if we continue moving downward here, we see a book called Trans. There's that book Trans Plus again that talks about chest binding. Um, don't be distracted by the trans racial person to the right of your screen, Rachel Dolezal. Hello, Rachel. Uh, famous in my area of, of the woods here. Um, now, why is we're showing you all this here? Because if you continue to scroll down in the article, It said here that IFF received lists of books currently in circulation for five school districts. Idaho Falls, Nampa, Pocatello, West Ada, and Twin Falls. Across these districts, these book contains all of these, all of these things down here. Um, These districts have many more books with inappropriate content in circulation. And this article, like I said, it goes into uh, it goes into um, extreme graphic, very very unnormal behaviors. Um, you saw our producer there highlight blood play, whatever that is. I don't want to know what that is, but we're going to continue forward. Um, as you scroll down to some of the other images here, there's a the, the book. Let's talk about it, which is the teen's guide to sex, relationships, and being human. Um, if you see down here, yeah, the the next graphic after this one is uh, let's talk is a is a clip is a uh, a page from let's let's talk about it. It talks about monogamous relationships. It talk about it talks about polyamorous relationships, and romantic relationships come in different colors. There's no wrong choice, kids. You can explore as many or as few as you fancy. These books are in the libraries, folks. They're in the school districts and they're in the libraries. Um, it goes on to discuss some of the anti... Uh, dives into some of the anti, anti-racist anti baby uh, from Ibrahim's uh, ex Kendi. Um, but as we continue further down the page here, um, you're going to get to uh, some more about this. Um, let's talk about it. <clears throat> and how to view pornography. Um, a lot of this is, it's very fascinating that they say that there's no porn in the libraries, yet there's instruction manuals on how to view porn. Melissa Wintrow, do you agree there's no pornography in the library? 
Is that true? Is that true? Keep keep scrolling here, guys. Keep scrolling. You'll see it. There's a person at a computer, and uh, and it says a great place to research fantasy and kinks safely is on the internet. Yeah, there it is. A great place to research fantasies and kinks safely is on the internet. There are tons of people and communities out there who share your interests and have all kinds of advice. All right, come back to me for a second here. Do you understand what this is doing? This book in your library is telling your kids to go on the internet, to research pornography sites, and to join communities that share your interests. I think we agree there's no pornography in the library. Folks, I don't I don't understand the defense. The defense of these books, the defense of libraries, why librarians want to stock the shelves with these books and insist that your children be exposed to them, if you so wish. We have something called Amazon.com. It basically put bookstores out of business. When I was growing up, one of the f- most fun places to go to was the library and then also a bookstore where I could actually like own the book. The bookstores even had sometimes had even better, greater selections of things for kids. I, it, 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 the Amazon.com, if you, if you need these books for your child, or if you're a psychologist who feels that some of these books may be good to help uh, an abused child or somebody going through gender dysphoria or whatever it is, but to have these books stocked in the libraries where children can just stumble upon them without any guidance is atrocious, absolutely atrocious with our public dollars where we are supposed to trust our librarians. There's a big problem, folks. This is a big problem. And when you have someone like Melissa Wintrow, literally, show, show these images here. Show these images. What's the bottom one? This That bottom one. You don't have to go full screen. <laughs> I, think people, I think people may get it. Depending on, on your age and where you found it, porn, porn can also be unethical or illegal to watch. So do your research. Look up interviews with your favorite porn performers. Go to the sites they recommend and pay for your porn. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Wow. Um, Rachel. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, I keep scrolling. Uh, there's a book called SEX. There's a book called SEX. I don't know if we sh- I don't know if we need to show any more of this stuff. The Handmaid's Tale graphic novel is particularly disturbing, um, because I'm sure in its just written form, it's pretty yeah uh, yeah how how to put on um, a condom. Um. But the uh, the graphic novel, you know, when 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 that woman read the book at the beginning of the show that we the clip that we showed at the beginning, imagine if that was turned into a graphic novel, like The Handmaid's Tale was. Imagine if that was turned into a graphic novel and sitting on the shelf. These images here of um, of the Handmaid's Tale sitting on the shelves of your library. Let's scroll down a bit. Here's a rape by a doctor as this woman is undergoing a an examination. Um, oh my goodness. I, I'm telling you folks, I, I know we've we've put a warning on this. Um You've got um, instructions on how to pack your underwear if you're a tr- if you're if you're feeling like you're a man who needs to be a woman. Packing underwear is just as if more important than pa- than the packer you choose. The right kind of underwear will help keep the packer in position. Some of this I don't even know what some of this language is. 
Um, it keeps the packer from falling out when going to the restroom, for example. Uh, there are specially designed underwear for packing, which are great. So teaching your, your young boys how to pack away their, their genitalia because they feel like being a girl. Yeah, there it is. Okay, folks, um, we're going to put the link in here to this article. I don't know how many people saw it. I know it made the rounds, you know, last year or, or whenever it was when, when Anna put it out. Um, and we wish Anna the best. We know she's semi-retired at the moment, and we, we wish her and her family the best. But uh, uh, this, is th this, this, is what we're, this is what they're battling. And um, do, are, do we have any more clips from that hearing? I think there was... Um, I think there was a, uh, uh, oh, Senator Taves. Yeah. Senator Taves had uh, who hopefully will, will join us on the program today. Uh, they might be in meetings. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, guys know how it goes when we invite guests on and they're ready to come, but, uh, it's everything's live. So, um, but Senator Taves and, uh, he had, he had uh, a comment to make on this particular bill. And then also governor little issued some remarks about this bill and what he hopes to see in it. So let's watch, uh, let's watch those clips. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to point out that what we're, the only possibility of a penalty for a library, in my understanding, is if there is material that fits the description of Idaho law that is harmful to a minor. So a lot of the other things that I've, um, I've just seen books, names of titles of books thrown about that, that are obviously not that. So I just want to point out that there's, there, uh, there is no penalty for To Kill a Mockingbird being in our libraries or uh, some of the other things that have been mentioned. But if there are books that fit the criteria of, uh, of what our statute says, then it, it seems very legitimate that those should be um, taken out of our libraries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Carlson, uh, you mentioned that there was some questions from the man on the second floor that you that were addressed in this. I was just wondering what what those were. Senator Carlson, I have my notes very detailed, so I'm going to read you what I have. He wants no institution to go bankrupt and no frivolous lawsuits. This will not be. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I forgot Senator protocol. Carlson. <laughs> Senator, S Chairman Guthrie and Senator Tays. He has asked that we, there be no frivolous lawsuits and that he wants no institution to go bankrupt. So this would not allow institutions to go bankrupt. Uh, it's just removing them, the books to a separate area. Okay, um, we don't want our libraries to go bankrupt and we don't want any frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> okay then don't put this stuff in the library. Don't put this stuff in the library and then you won't go bankrupt. Like there has to be a punishment for doing this type of stuff. <laughs> don't break the law. Don't hurt our kids and you won't suffer the outcomes. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll try and move on. <laughs> 